Katie Hall. And I'm Raymond Lee. We've just been welcomed aboard the Queen Mary in Long Beach by Commodore Everett Horde. Katie, Raymond, I want to say what a privilege and pleasure it is to have you on board the Queen Mary tonight. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure indeed. <laughs> First up, a look at the world of modern dance through the eyes of the award-winning dancer and choreographer, Jennifer Nugent. Currently dancing with the Bill T. Jones Arnie Zane Dance Company, she is a consummate artist. I think I really wanted to be a ballerina. I had a book, The Life of a Ballerina, and I loved the leg warmers that went up to the thigh, and I loved the holes in the tights and how um, the more you wore the shoes, the more ripped they would get. I grew up in South Florida, Hollywood, Florida, and um, about the age of seven, my mom enrolled me in a ballet class, ballet tap. It was a half hour ballet um, and a half hour tap. And um, I remember my teacher keeping me after class yelling at me because I could not keep rhythm to save my life. And I did ballet, tap, then acrobatics, jazz, belly dancing, um, chorus work. I think for me, I, I loved the music and I loved learning the dances and I, it just touched me. Contact improvisation is the sharing of weight between two people. It's a shared experience. Uh, it could be light touch, a brush, or it could be a heavy, heavy weight. It's a duet, it's like a tango or a ballroom, a conversation between two bodies. So you just are constantly negotiating, constantly giving a little more, giving a little more, until you've, you get to know each other and you trust each other, and then you can give yourself to your partner. I first saw Jennifer at the American Dance Festival and I was way back in the audience and I was a beginning dancer and right away, the way that she moved pulled me in. I just remember, I kept saying to myself, who is that creature? She's so grounded, like it's like she's nailed into the floor and she's fierce and powerful, yet there's, there's like a quivering, fragile quality humble quality at times, so, so she like, she embodies the opposites. So I, so I saw her first performing, and then I, I was in a, a Danny Lepkoff contact improvisation class, and I, I was paired up with her. It started uh, picking up the speed, picking up the speed, picking up the speed, and then we'd down into the floor, and then and then lifting each other, but keeping our sacrums connected. And so, I don't even know if she remembers that dance, but that was a really uh, huge moment for me. It was like that dance that I've always dreamed of having. <laughs> And then we became close by dancing together in David Dorfman's company. When we started dancing together, it was like, oh, I know you. Oh, I know you. And we just um, had a chemistry with each other. He likes to say, we both like to say, I come from the inside out, and he goes from the outside in. But we both get to the same place. No, sorry. That was me imagining myself. Imagining you, but you would be more like. We come about it very differently, but um, we are very similar. We're, we're almost twins when it comes to the dancing. And I think we also have such high respect for each other's abilities and ideas. And we have a lot of the same ideas.
when Paul was phasing out of David's company, we had already begun working together and making our own work and knew that that's something we wanted to do. We wanted to do partnering like we had never done before. We wanted to be detailed. We wanted it to be hard, um, challenging, intricate, something new. And we started by going in the studio and making a list of body parts and connecting them. I think it was a life story. Um, farewell, what I love about that title, it could be farewell, like farewell, like fair good, be happy, or it could mean goodbye. And um, I think we struggled with it being a personal piece or more of a, an abstract relationship. But what it was was two people grappling to decide whether to stay or go. Where did we want to go? Did we want to go together? What did we want from dance? Could it work together or, or, or not? With that, thank you. Going into transition, now we're going into doctor's office. Paul and Jen are very unique performers, and I remember first time seeing them. There was uh, this strange and rare moment where the body and the space mash together. And they also have this amazing connection between the two of them. They somehow understand, on a cellular level, each other. I loved them right from the first moment and um, I may have been scheming to get them into the company ever since. <laughs> Blob Out Mountain was choreographed by Bill T. Jones and Arnie Zane during their duet process. Um, it was part of a trilogy of Monkey Run Road, Blob Out Mountain, and Valley Cottage. To have the opportunity to do the work was a gift, um, a, true, a true gift. It had the formality, which Paul and I both treasure, and it just had so many rich, inspiring details of rhythm. Their idea was it was cinematic, so that as it developed, um, it was like taking stills, and one still would lead to the next still, so that as the piece got faster and as the piece got harder, it would be like a film and you could just see it uh, all unfold in front of you. It was about a relationship. It had a relationship to it. Bill being six foot something, very tall, and Arnie being five foot six, maybe five. For this piece in particular, Arnie decided that he wanted to lift Bill. And that was gonna be his, it was his desire, it's what he, his challenge was that he wasn't gonna be lifted, he was gonna lift Bill throughout the whole piece. When it came time for Paul and I to do it, you know, times have, have changed. There was the whole revolution of women lifting men, you know, women being as strong as men. So it wasn't um, something I had never done before. But I think as an audience, people were always kind of surprised, like, wow, you really tossed him around. It wasn't that hard. <laughs> As I was eager to please God and my mother, I did this for a number of weeks, always opening to the same time. The piece Story Time, as you might know, is based on John Cage's Indeterminacy, um, where Bill tells 70 stories, one minute long stories for 70 minutes, and we have one minute long dance sequences. When we first started the process, we made up 60 shapes. Mother should call its name constantly. Jennifer in particular, she can make those 
very abstract shapes <gasps> suddenly take on meaning. I started thinking about rhythm about, well, I think, I guess it's always been in my body, rhythm from tap dancing. I love music a lot. I love um, feeling it, feeling the music inside my body. When I'm dancing with, with other dancers, I'm definitely focused on them. I like to look around the space. I like to be with them. I like to know that we're in this piece together. As I started getting more into my teaching and understanding the support of the ground, understanding the support of my limbs and the weight inside my body, I realized that it has a rhythm. You have a, your own inherent rhythm. Mine is a waltz. Mine's a one, two, three, one, two, three. So even though you're dancing, you're also playing music, you also have a say in how your body is responding musically or even to silence. So that as you're sp speaking with your body, you're saying a poem, you're, you're talking, you have a cadence. Um, it's not just a monotone, now I'm moving my body here, there, it's, it's, um, it's poetry. And I feel like the personal musical dialogue is poetry. Jennifer Nugent is currently touring across the country with the Bill T. Jones Arnie Zane Dance Company.